Harper and Dale Drury are not only romantic partners, but they're also keto diet partners as well. So if you can sustain that through a relationship, you know the relationship is good. Okay. So David is a PhD. But like a cool PhD, he's got like an earring and he's, yes. he's pretty hot. <laughs> right. that's, that's what really matters. And an educator, a researcher, a health consultant. And together with his wife, Dale, they wrote BioDiet. So if you've heard about BioDiet, it came out in early 2019. I've been seeing it all over the place. People are talking about it. And what it is is a guide to taking control of your health and well-being, but it's scientifically validated. It's a well-formulated ketogenic diet. I think so many people are confused about like what, what the hell to really do when you're doing right. keto. Like you hear so much and, and you want a smart, good looking doctor with an earring to tell you what to do <laughs> backed by a woman who wasn't too into it at first, but came around. So um, we're here today with them on life in the fasting lane and we're getting to see them on video, but you can find them on social media at bio diet book so check them out at bio diet book and so let's let them introduce themselves really quickly for the folks on audio we we are looking right at you on video but um, right. for folks who are just listening uh david and dale can you introduce yourselves real quickly and and we'll get that voice identification working absolutely my name is dale drury i'm um I'm David's partner and uh, co-author on the book and, and a former journalist and writer so um uh, you know that that it kind of that's those are my um credentials Excellent. Wonderful. And David. And a, and a keto and a keto enthusiast. And a keto enthusiast. I like that. And Dale, I'll be honest. When I first read it, before I read everything, I, I thought you were a gentleman. Um, so the lady, the gorgeous hot lady I'm seeing in front of me was not <laughs> what I expected when I heard David and Dale. Um, and, and I'm excited that we're a couple, Levi, getting to interview a couple. Yes. Although they're hotter than us, which is That's kind of nice. <laughs> other than that, we're good. And so, Dale, tell us about you. I'm sorry, uh, David, tell us about you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm a, a professor of kinesiology, associate professor of kinesiology at the University of the Fraser Valley here uh, in the Vancouver, BC area. And uh, I'm also a visiting scientist at the BC Cancer Research Center. And I have a couple of other affiliations. One is with the, uh, the Canadian Coalition for Therapeutic Nutrition, which is on my coffee mug here. I'm a scientific advisor and I'm a member of the Institute for Personalized Therapeutic Nutrition. And uh, yeah, I've been, we've been keto together. Uh, and thank you for all those flattering comments too. <laughs> no, I just tell the truth. I don't know how flattering it was. Um, um, it's been a fun voyage for us the last, uh, almost coming up on eight years now. And I've been actually studying this for more like 10 years. So, but we've been pretty strictly keto for about eight years. So I actually, I'm also a writer, Dale, and uh, I've written a couple books like on social media and also on online dating. So I'd love to oh. start this off by hearing, how did you guys meet? Tell us the scoop. Tell us the love story. Uh, we met at the gym, actually. Oh. Um, yeah. And I was, uh, I was working at CBC at the time and um, I, uh, I got, uh, I got a cold and, uh, we were supposed to get together and, you know, play squash or something like that. And I got a cold and said, listen, I can't, I can't make it. And, and I got a call from the front desk at CBC to say that there was some guy at, at the front and he was bringing soup. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's and a thought, good opening move. I love I, that. Exactly. That's really I, thought, romantic. <laughs> I yeah. thought to myself, "That's a clever move." You know? Yes. I, and it was fantastic soup. And so my question was, you know, did you? It was it canned? And he said, "No, I made it from scratch." So I thought, okay. "Whoa!" So, so right. I guess food has always been a part of our, our history, history, which goes back. Uh, no, actually, we didn't meet online because online didn't really exist. When we met. It was more like 20, 22 years ago, I think, uh, that we've been together. So. Uh, so you did this, you made this connection through homemade soup. A man that cooks is hot. Like, I, I'm going to say. That, I agree with you point. entirely. Yeah. Very it, nice. Okay. It works. For all the guys out there, it works. <laughs> you know, you can, you can spend all the money on roses and that's fine. But like anything you do to make an effort, like an actual physical spent time doing something is, yeah. is extra and, points for sure. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Um, sorry, she's, we're, our cues are off today. No, so okay. you guys... You said you've been keto for quite a while now, and, and David, you said you've been studying it for even longer. I think I saw in a, in a television interview you two did together that, David, you kind of like jumped off the cliff first, and, and Dale was kind of watching you plummet to the keto basement and uh, did not join you immediately. But how, at the beginning of that, of your personal keto journey, how did, the, how did that work within the relationship? 
Uh, well, actually, you know, we, we, we pretty much uh, jumped in together. I was, I was introduced uh, um, to the subject by a, a colleague of mine, um, Dr. Richard Mathias, who's a, um, he's a uh, professor emeritus now at the University of British Columbia. And, um, and, and we were on a, on a radio show, actually, I was a host of a radio show, co-host, and, and we had this discussion about what was best for weight management. And, and uh, I, I was sort of, you know, representing the, the conventional wisdom, I guess, which is, you know, the sort of low-fat, high-carb diet, and that uh, obesity was very complex and difficult and challenging because of all the variables. And, and uh, so he sort of took me down the rabbit hole, and then I spent a couple of years researching um, the, 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 all the nutritional science uh, if you can call it that, that supported that um, conventional wisdom. I, and in fact, I couldn't really find any evidence that saturated fats were bad for you or that, or that actually a, a high carb diet was good for you. And, and so I kind of formulated, uh, based on the, the present science, this is now going back 10 years, um, a, a diet that I then started using in, in, uh, in my research with, uh, with subjects and, and participants uh, with great success. And, and, and so Dale and I just decided, well, um, you know, we should, we should be doing this ourselves if we're also asking other people to do it. So we just sort of, we did jump in together and it was, um, it was, uh, we decided we would need a drink during the Obama re-election. <laughs> so I'd like to say that was our, our last day of non-keto was the first Obama administration. We pretty much started with the second one. So it's uh, seven okay. and a half years, I guess we've been together and it's, it's been, uh, it's been fun. Now I, 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 kind of, you know, had more of the science in mind. So it was great that Dale could just come in and, and, and be a partner with me on it because it is easier to do it if, if you're partners, if you do it together, for uh, sure. Don't I should say, though, David jumped in and I, I kind of put my toe in and said, <laughs> I don't know about this, you know. I like eating the foods that I like, but, you know, at the same time, I'd also noticed that I was putting on weight around my middle, which I figured wasn't a good thing. And there was a part of me that didn't want to accept that this was inevitable, that that's what happened with women. You just got to a certain point and then you got what they call matronly. Sure. And, and I thought, you know, maybe I'll give it a try. But I have to say I was not, I was not entirely on board. I, I, I told her we'd have to give up wine for a couple yes. of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> was that the worst part? Yeah, that was the worst part. Oh, <laughs> honestly, you know, that was the worst part. But, but I pretty quickly, um, you know, sort of after we went through, through a couple of little rough spots, I pretty quickly uh, realized that I had lots more energy. Um, I didn't hurt when I got out of bed, which was huge, right? I, and, you know, it just the inevitability of your knees and your ankles as you get older, you know, I just, I, I realized, wow, he could yeah. be onto something here, you know? And, and we so were losing weight. Yeah, yeah, and so I look at the two of you and, and you're, you appear fit, you appear healthy. And I'm, I'm curious, like when I am not a person who has uh, experienced much fitness or much healthiness in my life, it's a <laughs> relatively new endeavor. And my idea of a healthy weight, which is in like the one eighties is like really exciting and probably a lot higher than a lot of people's. I peaked at 300 pounds. I've struggled with obesity wow. my entire life. I've had three bariatric surgeries. Um, and, and really in the past couple of years got healthy from keto and intermittent fasting. So when I see people like you and I hear you met at a gym, I just think, yeah, but these people were always hot. These people were <laughs> always fit. These people were always perfect. I, I, am I right? Oh, oh, I would say not always perfect and not always. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I think, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, I, yeah. healthy for sure. Yeah. Now, it, part, one of the well, interesting parts of the yeah. story was that during the process, uh, Dale had to go, she had a faulty uh, aortic valve in her heart, so I actually had to undergo uh, open heart surgery. Uh, so we had to talk with the cardiologist who was very supportive and so on about our diet and what we were eating and that sort of thing, and then we've been monitoring things. It's all been great. Yeah. I've never yeah. been in ill health. I don't take any medications. I'm, you know, I'm a kinesiology prof and I'm active, so I'm, uh, but I wasn't, um, I was never overweight, uh, uh, but, but pushing up against it. Right now, I, I, I think I weighed in about 149 pounds, and I was closer to 180 pounds. I like so, to, I like to call him Bellinacious. Yeah, she is. You know, I, I was sitting there one night, you know, and I because I don't drink beer anymore, and I had a beer, a can of beer, and I was sort of sitting back, and I had it 
balanced on the top of my belly, right? I was going, look, I do <laughs> and, and you also had a bag of biscotti. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Wow, that, that is a powerful combination. And eat, eat half a bag. I need to have the bag, yes. Yeah. So, you know, but, but, I, I, but I was healthy enough that I managed to, you know, and active enough that I, I managed to control my weight to a degree. But I guess what Dale was saying earlier is we have this notion that as you get older, um, you, it's this part of aging that you get bigger and you put on mid, mid abdominal body fat. And I realized that that's actually not true. And, 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 you know, through diet, which is the most important lifestyle factor for your health, uh, you can actually reverse that and, and pretty quickly. And, and congratulations to you, Eve, for, for losing all that weight. Um, you know, that's, that's a huge challenge. And, and, uh, I love hearing those stories. We both love hearing those stories all yeah, the time yeah. about people having thank success. You, thank you so much. I, I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, I, I've, tried for 24 years and I, I couldn't do it. I went to binge eating rehab, which helped me mentally, but never really helped me control the weight. I went with trainers. I did hypnosis. I did medications. Um, and really the moment for me that it, it, it broke through was when I read Dr. Jason Fung's obesity code that right. really changed everything for me. And it really pissed me off. Um, <laughs> so I was like, this intermittent fasting is, is crap and I'm just going to try it and show him it's wrong. And then he right. was right. And I was really mad. Um, and then he and I got to be friends and, and started, you know, writing together. But, um, I, I started with keto and then I went to fasting and for me, the combination of the two is, is what, you know, really broke through for me and ended my carb addiction. Um, now I can clearly see that when I eat sugar and carbs, I want to eat more sugar and carbs yeah, yeah. and I am constantly hungry. And yeah. I kept seeing doctors asking like, so desperate, not able to get pregnant because of infertility, pre-diabetic and just so desperate and so great at everything else in life and such a loser and so shameful of like, what is wrong with me? Why am I broken? Why do I think about food every second of every day? Do, do you come across that? with people and and how do we explain to people that it's possible not for everyone but it's possible if they were for a period of time to not eat those things that those cravings that that pain um and and feeling like you're broken might end mm. i've been sort of back and forth with a woman on on email uh who had bought the book and was in the process of going through exactly that and i guess my um, and, you know, I, 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 I certainly uh, feel for you in that circumstance. It, it, that wasn't mine so much yeah. um, as this feeling of loss, I think, uh, because I, the foods that I like to eat, I, I wasn't able to eat anymore. And I guess my, what I had said to her, and David certainly feels a lot more um, with, with groups and, and counseling than I do, certainly. Um, uh, what I said was, I, I, I think... You just need to give it a bit of time. You just gotta trust yourself, trust that you can do this. And, and eventually uh, you stop craving those things because you're able to replace them with fat. And I guess from a fasting perspective, because you know when you get back to eating, you're gonna be able to eat these fantastic foods mm -hmm. that you've developed a taste for. Uh, like you know, grass-fed butter and you know, uh, and well, and cheese and and you know, meat or fish or uh, tofu or whatever you know, sure. other protein you're having. And I, you know, Eve, I, I really um, you know what you're saying. I, I do hear that a lot, and it's interesting that um, there's so much psychology involved with food. There's so much culture. There's so much emotion. Uh, it's more than just calories and and uh, you know, macronutrients. Um, and, and so hearing your story, it's actually very typical. And we have, we have a little um, adage we use in, in, in you know, obesity research, which is what, what, if you were obese or overweight, you got back to what you consider a normal weight. Whatever it is you did to get there, you have to do for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So for heaven's sakes, we don't want that to be bariatric surgery. That's, <laughs> that's, right. that, that should be a last resort. And the, and the good news is, you know, that you guys have discovered is through a ketogenic diet, uh, you can do it. Um, and, and, but we do in, in, in biodiet, we talk quite a bit about the psychology and the culture of food and, and uh, how to maintain that, that uh, commitment. And we even uh, interviewed a sports psychologist to talk about how, you know, those athletes remain committed and so on. So, so that's part of um, the way we present the, the, uh, the actual program is that, is that you have to, 
get your environment fixed, you have to think about, you have to be mindful about food. I guess that's the best way to say it. Start being mindful about sure. food and, and then you can start to make that change. And that's why most of ketogenic interventions, they, they last for a couple of months because it takes a while to establish those new habits. And once you do and you see the results, then that's the positive feedback people need to, to stay with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and David, it, I'm no, sorry, just, go ahead, David. Kind of, no, it's just, it's kind of get your head in the game. Yeah. And if you can get your head in the game early, then you know how it's going and, and really understand the science. I think from our perspective, understand the science of it. Then, you know, as you see the, the waste disappear on your waist um, or the weight disappear on your waist, excuse me, that you're, uh, that you're getting healthier sure. and not just looking better, but you're genuinely getting healthier. Yeah. yeah, we had a guest on a few episodes ago who uh, he was a, a an intermittent fasting coach and he described households where one person was engaging in a ketogenic diet and yeah. engaging in intermittent fasting and the other partner in the, in the household or roommate wasn't. And he called it a blended household, which I thought was <laughs> pleasant <laughs> euphemism. Yeah. But you, David, you mentioned the environment and the psychology of it, but what obviously having somebody sitting right next to you all day who is engaging in the same activities and supporting you in your endeavors is, is super helpful. But have you guys seen, like, what are the ways of, of presenting this idea to your partner, to your roommate, to the people, your, maybe your family who isn't right. completely on board with like, what do you mean no bread? That's really bad for you. Um, have you guys run across any uh, horror stories or efficient ways of, of communicating this to the people who care about you, but maybe aren't informed in the same way you are? Mm, that's a really good question, especially if you uh, live with somebody um, because, you know, that's not our experience. But yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, preparation and commitment are really important. Um, having people understand that you want to make a change. So that's the first thing is people have to feel like they want to make a change. And unfortunately, you guys, people wait until they get bad news from their physician. They get the news that they've got type two diabetes, or that they're, you know, they've got heart problems, or they got weight problems, and that's when they want to intervene. I would love it if people uh, started these sort of lifestyle interventions before that. As I say, as a cancer researcher, the best way to treat cancer is not to get it in the first place. And so, if we can reduce your incidence of yeah. chronic disease, which would be, you know, cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, um, you know, we, I figure with a ketogenic diet, with a well-formulated ketogenic diet like the bio diet, you reduce your risk by about 70%, which is, but, but you know, we don't, you know, if, if that, if that um, warning people about the health benefits work, then we would have no smokers, right? People still, people still smoke because they don't associate the negative consequences with, the, with their actions on that particular day. So that's why the psychology can be a bit, a bit, a bit challenging. And, but the, the, the really good news is that when you do this, and you guys have experienced this, I'm sure, whether it's with intermittent fasting or ketogenic diets or both, is you start to see results pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, we've, had, we've had some of our participants that are type 2 diabetic that actually reverse that type 2 diabetes. In other words, they don't need any medication within a couple of days. Wow. If, you've been, if you've been type 2 diabetic for a decade, and suddenly you make an intervention that fixes things, at least in the short term, within a couple of days, Wow, that's a huge uh, feedback. So, so that's why one of the things we ask people to do is, is when they start, you know, make all those physical measurements, go and see your physician. We always encourage people to work with their physician. Get those measurements done so that you can then see your own changes, and that provides that positive feedback to help you stay with, with, uh, with the program. But to get back to, to the question you were asking a, a few minutes ago, is what we've seen is when they've spoken to groups, um, what we've seen is women often – uh, dragging their husbands along yeah, okay. um, because they are you real husbands are clearly reluctant but I, I think when as part of a couple you see the other person really benefiting and then you, the question is sort of okay well if they're doing so well and they're prepared to um, support me here um, then I should join as well I think it's a little bit more difficult with kids um, because you you know kids have kids eat what they eat sure. um, and it's great if you can reduce sugar and that kind of thing but but one of the things that we suggest is that you you know you create um, a shelf in the fridge that's yours and and that their stuff is someplace else and so mm -hmm. in your mind you've separated what you're going to eat from what they're going to eat and that that would apply whether it's children or or a partner or roommate, you know, roommate yeah. or whatever yeah, yeah. Sure. so Levi has always been an athlete and when he gains weight I mean, he really half-asses it. He gains like <laughs> 20, 30 Ow. pounds. Ow. 
found her too. Oh, <laughs> it's really annoying, right? So then he just <laughs> does it. And, but he really started adopting this way of eating. I, I really think a lot to support me. Um, and I, I appreciate it. Also, he just, he just doesn't care what he eats, which is, I don't understand. He'll just eat right. whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and just go on. And so when I had unhealthy things and adopted a health unhealthy way of eating, he came along and gained 30 pounds. And when I switched to eating, uh, ketogenic, he came along and lost 30 pounds. It's just yeah. like so easy for him. I can't yes, exactly. Yeah. Whatever. So I appreciate the support. We're actually going to go to low carb universe and Mallorca, mm -hmm. uh, Spain and speak about the thing you're talking about, which is how do you get your partner's buy-in? And if, yeah. they, if, if this is not the right solution for them, how do you get their acceptance and support of what you want to do? We yeah. have also brought our daughter along on this journey and you're right, it was tough, but she's 12 and now she eats very little sugar, much less carbs, and she has lost weight, she has gotten healthier, and we're incredibly impressed by her. And we use exactly what you said. We have a shelf in the cabinet that yeah. is for her, was for her and over time, We've taken those things out and it's interesting how in tune she is with how her health got better and how she just felt better. Yeah. Um, I'm still amazed because I am almost two years into this process. And like you said, the weight loss was pretty quick. It was the first mm -hmm. few months. The fact that I am still maintaining that weight loss almost two years in now, mm -hmm. yeah. I can't believe I'm not fat again. Like it, it freaks me out every day right. of my life. <laughs> right. right. I'm always in a gaining it back, right? Yeah, so yeah. in bio diet, do you talk about some of these techniques on, on what to do with partners or family, how, or how to set up your household? Do you, do you address some of those things in the book? Absolutely. We talk about sort of the, the process of clearing out, um, clearing out the, the, the cupboard or clearing those sort of... We call clearing. it a kitchen detox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then recognizing that not everyone will be on board and the kinds of things that you need to do, and including saying to someone, listen, I, I need to lose weight. It's important for me. It's important for my health. But the last thing I need for you to do is come home with a box of donuts. Yes. Sure. And my, one of my father's favorite phrases is, it's not what you take out of the refrigerator, it's what you put in. And I've, right. heard, yes. I've heard that from him for years. Yes, that's true. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. And, you know, we're talking about change. And, you know, most people, by the time they're adults, they've kind of established the lifestyle they want to have. So asking, sometimes I say, you know, asking people to make this change is kind of like asking, you know, Christians to become Muslim. Like it's a, <laughs> it's a big change because yeah. you're believing one sure. thing is a healthy diet and suddenly somebody tells you a different thing is actually a healthier diet. And, and you have to kind of go through that, that religious conversion. And, and, uh, and you do get people, I'm sure you experience this, that will tell you you're crazy, that will yeah. tell you this diet's going to kill you, that you're going to have a heart attack. And, and so that's what happens. You know, not everybody's going to support you, whether it's in your family or your, or your friends or community. And, and you just have to, um, that's why it's a personal voyage. That's why we have this Institute of Personalized Therapeutic Nutrition. Everybody's different. And I, I would just say, you know, this diet isn't going to work for everybody. It works for roughly about seven out of eight people. So, you know, talk to your physician. If you have some issues you think could be addressed with this diet, uh, have a go and see if it works for you, you know, make those measurements. And if it doesn't, then you know, then you know. But if it does, and as I say, you know, you gotta remember about three quarters of Americans now are overweight or obese and mm -hmm. somewhere between a third and a half of Americans either have type two diabetes or have prediabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome. And, and, um, and that's increased, that's increased exponentially since we started eating this high carb diet in the eighties. Right. So, so we do need a solution and, you know, more fancier drugs that, that don't actually reverse the disease, that just manage that inexorable decline, that I don't think should be our first line. Our first line should be a lifestyle intervention. And we know it was, it was even published in, in The Lancet in 2017, of all the life, in terms of global burden of chronic disease, of all the lifestyle factors, um, diet is more important than, than smoking, it's more important than alcohol, it's more important than sedentary behavior and lack of exercise, all of those combined. So, so you like adages? Well, one is, uh, you know, you can't outrun your fork. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, if you're on a bad diet, all the exercise isn't going to help you. And, and the other one um, is, you know, you lose weight in the, in the kitchen and you get fit in the gym. So as a kinesiology professor, obviously I'm very interested in people maintaining their exercise regimen. It's very important for, for good health. But in terms of weight loss, and let's face it, that's what brings most, most people to ketogenic diets is, sure. is the weight loss factor. That's great because it's one of the three components we present as the axis of illness is obesity, the other two being insulin resistance, and, and uh, Dr. Fung writes about that uh, in the obesity 
code. And then the third one is inflammation. And, and so if you're, you know, if you're getting a little older, you know, you can tell if you're obese or not. You get on a scale, you stand in the mirror. How do you know if you're inflamed? Well, that's generally you hurt. So if your bones and muscles are hurting, if you're aching, if you're not recovering from exercise, that means you're systemically inflamed. You have these uh, inflammatory chemicals in your body. But that's not just your joints and muscles. That's also your blood vessels. And, and it's inflammation that causes cardiovascular disease. So if you can do something to reverse that inflammation, which ketogenic diets do, and you don't hurt anymore, that's a great sign. And then what about insulin resistance? That's tough. They have some really fancy blood tests for insulin resistance. But um, you can pretty much tell... If you're starting to experience brain fog, if you're starting to have some memory loss, if you're starting to, you know, just you, you can feel your brain kind of slowing down a bit as you get, you know, towards middle age. That's a sign that your brain is actually becoming insulin resistant. And, and uh, again, if the diet reverses that and suddenly, you know, my friends call it the Harper High. Some people, when they adapt to get <laughs> diets, they get this sudden, they wake up and they just feel fantastic. And this one uh, woman that was one of our participants just said, it's, it's Dave, it's like, you pulled this cotton wool out of my brain that's been there for 10 years, you know, and I just feel fantastic and I'm thinking clear. And, and so I have to say, I, I didn't entirely experience that. <laughs> I had a little of the keto flu and I was kind of cranky at and, first. Uh, yeah. At first. And I, I think for, for, you know, talking about sort of getting back to sort of the idea of, of how do you, um, how do you transition? I think one of the things that I had dis I've discovered, and, and I'm guilty of this, and I think lots of women are, is this idea that you need to eat fat. Yeah, more and fat, a lot of fat. You need to yeah. eat a lot of fat, and so because that's what your body needs to burn, and the more of that that you eat, the, the better that's going to be. And, and we've been telling people for 40 years that eating fat makes you fat. And so right. it's very hard to get. It's very, yeah, some it people is. I know just say, "Listen, I I would love to do I would love to do this, but I can't get my head past, you yeah. know, eating butter and eating cheese." And sure. Yes. So actually, stuff. what happens with a lot of women we find in our studies compared to men um, is they will reduce their carbohydrate, but that's all they do. They don't increase their fat. And, and then so what happens? And then, and then you're they're hungry. Then and you're then hungry. they want to hurt their husbands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you're also in, you're you're also in calorie restriction, and calorie restriction over the long term uh, that will actually slow your metabolisms, and and it can slow your metabolism for a long time. We're talking years if you go on a very you know long calorie restricted thing. Yep. People yo-yo dieting, you know, as soon as you go off it, your body's saying, hey, we're now in an environment that's fast feast or famine, so let's let's eat all we can and put on whatever body weight we can for the next famine, right? And, and so you have to be careful about that. I was going to ask you guys about your, about your experiences with, with intermittent fasting. And as, as I say, anything, if you, if you are overweight or obese and, and you get back to a normal weight, anything you can do is great. Um, but what's your experience? Do you do like longer fast more than three days or is it more daily? Yeah. So we um, pretty typically do 16, eight, which is, you know, skipping yeah. breakfast. We, if you say 16, eight, it sounds much more scientific and planned out, but we skip breakfast. We have a couple of cups of coffee in the morning. That, that's um, stale. Yeah, yeah. By, by just by, yeah, by, by normal. Behavior. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we, we cut out snacking. Um, you know, we, there, there is a, there's a school of thought that says six small meals a day to feed that engine and keep things yeah, going, no, no, particularly no. as an athlete, you know, <laughs> when I was playing sports and the coaches would be like, make sure you're fueling up. So we cut out snacking, we cut out breakfast. Um, Eve, as she mentioned, got very upset at the beginning of this endeavor. Um, and she's all about proving people wrong. So she, <laughs> in her very first fast was 36 hours. Yeah. Okay. And about a week and a half later, she's like, I'm going to do 10 days because I'm sure I'm going to die and that will prove them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what she was thinking, That's but what I'll, happened. I'll let her tell you what the outcome of that was. Yeah, so yeah. I was a person who was eating uh, eight to 10 times a day small meals because I was heard that'll keep my metabolism rolling. I was from South Louisiana and told to never skip a meal in my life because it's yeah. fun to eat. And, you know, there's tons it's of skinny people yeah. in South Louisiana, right? Um, so we're on the right track there. So... Uh, I did it because I was pissed and I wanted to prove Dr. Fung wrong and he was right and I was wrong and physically not eating for 10 days was not difficult but mentally because when I realized mm -hmm. that this mm -hmm. worked and I didn't die after day five even as a college educated woman I was livid I was 
really mad. So um, <laughs> that's how that started. And then in, at the beginning of this year, I did a 10-day fast where Megan Ramos coached me through it. And we mm -hmm. captured all that on video. And a lot of people fasted with us. I don't think I'll do another one that long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think there are things that people should do it and, and things that you could. My theory is be as lazy as you can. If you yeah. can solve your problem by fasting and not having breakfast, and that's it. That's what you should do. You don't need to yeah. do 10 days or 11 days. If there's a therapeutic reason where you're working with your doctor and a longer fast is necessary, that makes sense. But this started with low carb and keto for me, which I think got me into fat burning and made me not feel so dang hungry all the time. And then intermittent fasting, combining those two things is what was for me. And I love food. So I eat a lot and I rarely feel hungry. Um, anymore because I get to eat a lot of food and I eat a lot of fat that are healthy fats and, yeah. and foods that make me feel good. And I'm healthy on zero medications, 45 years old, crazy hot. Um, <laughs> and that's what really matters. So I wanted to ask you, David, about your cancer research. So sure. I hear people using fasting more and more and I hear Dr. Fung talking about it and people talking about using fasting as an add-on and low carb as an add-on to chemo or radiation. And I wanted to know your general thoughts about that. And is it a good tool to have in your arsenal if, if you're dealing with cancer? Uh, that's, it's a great question. It's actually a pretty complicated question because, uh, you know, cancer isn't really one thing. There are many, many different types and they respond differently to different treatments, which is why we have so many different treatments yeah. for different cancers. Um, in, in general, the first thing is uh, nobody should think even for a moment that they should be replacing their standard of care with a ketogenic diet and that's going to cure them of cancer. I've seen that uh, on the internet and frankly that's dangerous. Uh, what we do know for sure is that if there is benefit to a ketogenic diet, and we think there is, which is why we're doing this study, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, is is that you, you do it as an adjunct therapy with your standard of care. So whatever that standard of care is, you must maintain that. You must work with your physician. You must let them know because there can be side effects that they need to know about to moderate medications and so on. Um, so, so I work at the BC Cancer Research Center, which is one of the leading cancer research centers in the world, uh, in the Terry Fox lab with, with Dr. Jerry um, Crystal, and, and he's an immunologist, so we do the immunohistochemistry of, of the, the participants in our trial. The main trial is in Columbus, Ohio, at Jeff Volick's lab uh, at, at The Ohio State University, and this is a three-year study on, on uh, the therapeutic benefits of ketogenic diets for women with metastatic breast cancer. And, um, you know, I'm not the principal investigator, so I can't really comment on it, and, and we're in the mid of the trial, but I mean, so far, we've had 100% positive response, and, and, and uh, you know, it's very promising results. Uh, um, and we'll, we won't have those full results for another year or two yet. But um, there are other studies going on uh, looking at uh, GBMs, glioblastoma multiform, an incurable type of brain cancer. We've looked at it with pancreatic cancer with, with positive results in all cases. So in general, here's what most people don't know is cancer uh, cells, for the most part, don't have the metabolic flexibility of our other cells. In other words, they can't use fats and proteins for fuel. They need to use glucose, which is the carbohydrate fuel in our bodies. And uh, so when you're, when you're on a high carbohydrate diet, you're actually providing you know, more of the fuel that those cancer cells need. They'll concentrate uh, glucose 100 to 200 times what other cells will. That's in fact how we image them. So we just use radioactive uh, carbon to image them. Uh, radioactive gl uh, glucose, rather. Um, and the other thing is when you raise your blood sugar levels, as you know from reading Dr. Fung's book, you also raise your insulin levels. And, and again, what most people don't realize is insulin is not just about getting sugar out of your blood. It's also a very powerful growth factor. It, it, in fact, the growth factors in our cell, we call them insulin-like growth factors because they're very similar. And these are the ones that stimulate the protein synthesis that will foster cell division and cell growth. And that's what cancer is, uncontrollable growth of your cells. So on a high-carbohydrate diet, you're providing all of the fuel and the fertilizer that your cancer cells need to grow. It's an optimal environment. So what we're hoping is by changing that, by, re by, by reducing the glucose burden in your blood, your, your body can make all its own glucose. There's no essential carbohydrates, right? Your body will make its own. Um, uh, and, and then that keeps your uh, blood sugar levels moderate, keeps your insulin levels moderate. 
and that tips the balance in favor of your immune system. And that's the other side of the equation that we're investigating here too. So, so that's the basic principle. And anecdotally, there's been lots of great cases, but, but again, these are mostly small studies that are short term. And, uh, and we're, we're very hopeful that this will, this will be an effective therapeutic. And I think, you know, if you can find a, a physician that's knowledgeable about, because physicians don't get a lot of nutritional training. Yes. So if you can find someone that's interested in supporting that, um, it's, worth a, it's worth a look. Um, yeah, but, but we have to be very careful that we don't provide false promise for people at this point. I can ask it. Sorry, just throw one thing in, and that's the, the, the sense that it, it also, with people, it just it gives them some degree of control. Yes. And, and when, you're, when you're ill, um, you, and you're, you're being, you know, you're in a hospital environment or you're, you're in a home environment and, you know, and dealing with nurses, and it, you feel like you have little control. Right. And, and you have little, and you feel like, you know, if you're, if you're feeling desperate, that you have little hope. Yeah. And I think that what, what David has found in, is that people want to contribute to their, to their wellness. And so yeah. if this is going to help, um, and they hope it does, and they're working with the physician, then, you know, then that's, then that's, that's good for them too. Yeah. Psychologically, it's very powerful. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I've never heard anybody explain it that way, David, about fasting and low carb and cancer and keto. So thank you. Like you made that like a little easier for me to understand. Okay. So in a nutshell, go to your doctor, <laughs> do what your doctor says and yeah. research these methods to see if it's something you might consider adding on and, and gain support for it. You yeah, guys you know, are riveting. The, the, the other thing I, I would say is, 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 is the best way to do it is to start a ketogenic diet before you get sick. Yeah. And uh, actually, we've shown that with, with traumatic brain injury, too. Ketogenic diets are fantastic for recovery, but only if you've been on a ketogenic diet before you have that traumatic brain injury. Wow. I think, Dale, you said something earlier that, that I don't think we've really talked about before in any of our, our material, which is, um, and, and David, you mentioned it as well is the, the reduction of inflammation, not yeah. disease related or just, but just your joints don't hurt. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's the kind of thing, David, that I think can prompt people to, to maybe take that plunge before there's a traumatic medical event to drive it is if you're just tired of having aching hips, when you wake up in the morning, if you're tired of yeah. you know, your ankles hurting after five minutes of jogging, that, uh, yeah. this is something that you might explore to to move you forward a little bit. Listen, we heard these guys were good, but the truth is we had no idea how <laughs> damn good you are. And now I have to get bio diet right away. Um, yeah. We're out of time, but I'd like to ask if we could have y'all again in like a month, if you come back. Oh yeah, for sure. I have Absolutely. more questions. I want to hear more about bio diet. I want to hear what's going on with the book, maybe where people could like interact with you guys online and where they could see you. And, and so for now, we're going to put a link for bio diet yes. for the book, yeah, right? Yeah. So bio, bio diet .org is bio diet org is our website. And we, we've been actually been interacting with our readers uh, along with, you can talk mm -hmm. to, I, you can email either of us and, and we actually have parts of the book that you can download and, and uh, we're trying to make it as accessible to people as possible. Yes. We kept the cost Wonderful. down the size. Down. So for your health, for your hotness, check out bio diet.org. <laughs> Go check it out. These guys are brilliant. We're going to have them back on. Wonderful. Guys, thank you so much for joining us everybody That's else awesome. thanks so much for being here on life in the fasting lane podcast you can get more tips on fasting keto low carb at fastinglane.com go buy bio diet at biodiet.org visit our website we've linked it there for you just as well and you can follow us on instagram and twitter at fasting lane until next time to your health and your hotness david, david. <laughs> <laughs> you too.